Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. We saw the recent address when we saw the army chief speak about the perils of digital terrorism. Also the digital, uh, digital dilemmas that we've seen as far as navigating um, freedom of expression is concerned. This is of course one of those dilemmas that we are constantly and consistently confronted with. Um, whereas, you know, balancing the freedom of speech with uh, you know, hate speech, fake news, and recently we've seen um, many cases of fake news, misinformation, targeted propagandas emerge and prove, being proved also. We'll be talking about this, we'll be talking about the criticism that invariably follows any kind of uh, check on this uh, hate speech and fake news. And how do we aim to deal with this in this uh, day and age? All of that today on Perspective. I have with me um, Fakhar Yusuf Sai, who's a senior journalist. Thank you for being with us today. We also have with us Gharida Farooqi, who's a senior journalist and anchor person. Thank you for being with us. We have with us Barista Safiola Ghori, who's a, a lawyer and a senior analyst. Thank you for joining us. And Zayed Gushkori, who's a senior journalist. Gee, let me start with Gharida Farooqi. Gharida, can you hear me? There is, there is, you know, we've seen this for a while. We know that there are numerous cases where uh, fake news propaganda has been proven also. And yet there continues to be this outcry every time there's a check against this. Would you agree that Pakistan as a state also is confronted with a huge challenge of dealing with this misinformation propaganda, even in a lot of cases when it comes from the inside rather than outside? Thank you very much, Ms. Maru Fumit, for having me in your program. It's a pleasure, it's an honor, and uh, you are addressing uh, quite a burning issue today in your program. This is uh, one of the uh, most difficult and challenging problems that Pakistan is facing today, and uh, given the digital age uh, and the transformation that the entire globe has undergone uh, in this digital era. Uh, and given that uh, with a huge population and a huge number of youth population in Pakistan, which amounts to almost 60 to 70 percent of the entire uh, uh, population number, uh, this challenge becomes uh, mammoth and becomes a sort of uncontrollable. Now, the issue with Pakistan is we have all sorts of laws and rules and regulations and bindings and legal bindings to tackle this issue. But the real problem lies in the non-implementation of um, the uh, rules and regulation and all the laws that have been enacted by the parliament or otherwise. So uh, then there comes uh, a term which is recently coined uh, as digital terrorism, but that does not mean that the whole concept has recently emerged. Uh, the term might have been recently coined, uh, mostly and primarily by the chief. Hmm. Uh, but uh, the issue has been there. This issue has been faced by the citizens of Pakistan and uh, there might have been and there have been other terms to define that. But this term in itself, digital terrorism, is comprehensive, it's uh, detailed and it uh, caters to all the aspects falling under all the crimes that lie in the digital um, uh, stream or that lie in the cyber age or that lie in the cyber space. So as I think, I Arida, then what do we do about, you know, of course, my concern is, of course, enforcement is a huge issue. You're right, absolutely. But the thing is, how do we deal with the propaganda that follows every time there are checks or there are, you know, uh, there's, there are systematic, systemic checks to check that uh, digital terrorism or fake news or whatever one may call it. How do we deal with the criticism that comes in? Because that's also an issue. Well, I would say propaganda in itself is not a negative thing. It's not a bad thing. For example, there can be a positive propaganda, and but the problem lies with the negative propaganda. For example, if Pakistan is trying to uh, portray its positive image uh, uh, within its own uh, geographical boundaries or abroad at international level, that can be termed as a positive propaganda. So we are talking about negative propaganda and the fake news and the disinformation which is deliberately being spread. Now, that's a challenge which even the Western countries, which even the most developed of the democracies are still grappling with. They have still not come to um, that manner. They are still struggling with it. 
even though they have all the fancy laws and they have all the details in the comprehensive laws. But still, for example, take the case of UK, what happened in uh, UK just recently, even though the rights were racial, but that originated from a fake news. And that person is already under custody with FIA in Pakistan. Unfortunately, that emerged from uh, a person sitting in Lahore. But that 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 all started out from uh, from the digital domain. Now, how to tackle that? That's a very difficult question, and there are there is not just one strategy to deal it. It could be multi pronged. It could be multi layered. First of all, uh, the education system needs to be strong. Needs to be uh, detailed and needs to be uh, up par with the current. Uh, the requirements and the current dealings of the uh, social media. Unfortunately, the education system in Pakistan is lacking these facilities. Second of all, I I think. G. On that note, I'll just come back to you. I, I think let let me go to Fakhar Sab on this. Fakhar Sab, uh, what Kharida mentions, I think it's very apt. She talks about the education system. Yep. Of course, you know, education system invariably we need that kind of education that, you know, from a very basic level we educate our uh, children on, of course, the perils also and the and navigation of social media. Unfortunately, you know, relatively speaking, would you agree this is also a newer uh, kind of challenge? I mean, not extremely, I mean, I'm, I, I would say maybe 10, 15 years. Yeah. So, so, I guess, you know, in that sense, Everyone around the world, we're all mm. dealing with how to how to combat uh, the challenges there. Yeah, of course, it's a big challenge, mm. as uh, uh, Garida mentioned. Mm. Uh, uh, that it's a big challenge, not only for Pakistan, it's uh, for the whole world. But mm. I think so. Uh, we are not handling it with the proper manner. I, it's, okay. it's my concern about that. Of Why course, would you we say should. That? Of course, we should. Uh, uh, mm. educate our children, our youth especially, mm. Mm. because we have uh, our population is 64 percent uh, of youth uh, consisting on, of youth. Therefore, uh, we should educate them. And the most important thing is, is we uh, have banned the Twitter in Pakistan. Mm. I think so this is not the solution for, mm. for, for this type of matters. Okay. Of course, we should uh, make the law for, uh, mm. for this type of matter as well as we, uh, uh, we should uh, we should start it from 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 the beginning, not from uh, right now, uh, as the people were using as a uh, uh, keyboard warriors. Uh, mm. We we listen this type of things, and but this is new. The digital terrorism. It's a new uh, terminology, I think. So in mm. the Pakistani politics, we mm. are listening nowadays. Uh, they they should explain uh, the the uh, organizations. But isn't it a long term? Of course, I agree with you there, yeah. and I'm going to take it to barrister Safiullah Ghwari, the legal side of it. But Safiullah, isn't this also the long term? I mean, when we talk about educating, when we talk about, you know, um, ensuring that there is that kind of information out there where there is, you know, people know how to differentiate, people can, uh, you know, respectfully engage also. Uh, there is, you know, and they know how to sift through fake news and, and real news, which is, by the way, not an easy task for anyone educate you know educated or not the question is those are long term solutions in the meantime what can the law do thank you maruf so maruf i'll actually disagree with the idea of education to begin with like you said a uh, long term but let's look at the most educated countries in the world the uk is one of the most highly educated countries in the world they just fell victim to a, a propaganda campaign against muslims and they started uh, attacking muslims left right and center the U.S. is highly educated. They are doing it. France is extremely educated. They are doing it. What do we see? We see some of the most educated countries in the world not being not just being affected by the fake news that we see on this particular issue of uh, you know whoever uh, conducted the Southport murders, but also Palestine and Israel. We see that consistently coming from Israel. We see endless barrage of fake news for instance if i if i were to just tell you you know one of the first things that the israeli state media said when hamas attack was that they beheaded 40 babies now this has been debunked but did it change the mind of anybody in the western hemisphere the most educated class system in the world no it did not you know despite the fact that news came out said that it was false it, nothing changed so for a country like pakistan which has tried to make laws on it article 19 guarantees freedom of speech and expression that is well and good. But since then, Pakistan has been trying to regulate it. Pakistan has put forward various social media bills. All of them have failed. And 
the reason they have failed is because political parties have a vested interest in ensuring that their fake news goes out. I'll, I'll give you an example right now. I mean, you're on social media and I keep wondering why this news takes place. I, I would personally want an investigation. There was a recent uh, accident in Karsas, a lady named Natasha who comes from a very influential family. There is so much fake news out there that says, oh, she's flown away to Dubai. She's flown away to Canada. She's run away. Justice system has failed. Why? Why are we saying this? We know that she's in jail. We know that the doctors have declared her to be mentally fit. We know that she's still in custody. She's undergoing a case. Uh, similar fake news that consistently keeps coming out that Zahir Jafar, for instance, has been acquitted. And people believe it. People share it. Educated people share it. People that you and I both know, Maro, are sharing such fake news. So the question is, why are people consistently doing it? And what can the state do about it? Every time the state tries to do something about it, it falls down because people start protesting. They start thinking that this is an assault on their freedom of expression. Uh, can you hear me, by the way? Yes, 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 loud and clear. Right. So great. So, so every time, every time anything of the sort happens, people start thinking that this is an assault on their freedom of expression. This is so. This is what this is what I was coming to when when I asked earlier also Garida also on this that what does one do? Like you are saying, there is consistently you know, pieces of information that are simply inaccurate, there is fake news. But then again, it is that, you know, uh, constant share, it is that constant churning of that information that is also invariably shared all the time. Knowing that it's fake in a lot of instances, uh, in a lot of instances, not knowing it's fake, but you know, it's, it's a cycle, right? And then there's that Chinese whisper that's added. So what does how does the state tackle it? Because we've also had the army chief talk about, you know, this this kind of propaganda. We've also consistently, you know, uh, hearing about the dangers of this misinformation. Of course, in a lot of like you are say, uh, saying, the incident that you are quoting, of course, it is a cause of a lot of disenchantment against the state, against the system. When this kind of news, you know, against the legal system, against the country, against the, the institutions, if you look at, you know, the police, the, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, when you are, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's functioning to again uh, be used as a fodder um, against uh, our institutions, against the systems that are in place and that are working fine in this case. So, so what does one do? That's my question against this. Tell you what China has done, right? China, and there's a very famous Chinese saying in the in the Chinese information system uh, censorship systems that if there was to be a bomb blast, the effects of the bomb blast would be limited to whatever the radius of the bomb was, however powerful it was. But if there was to be a misinformation blast, it will penetrate to the very systems, very core of China, and that will destroy the very nation itself, which is one of the reasons why they have such a massive firewall that protects them. Now, I think the only thing that we can do is either we place a system that protects us. But you heard what Fakhar Sahib here said, you know, he is, and, and I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, I'm against what he's saying, but he's just said that, you know, he's against any kind of ban. And uh, you and I, a lot of people are against any kind of ban. But the question is that then you are, you know, dealing with a balance here, which nations like us, unfortunately, and I know that you've mentioned the West, but are, you know, more vulnerable to. There is, there is nothing else, right? We are, we are. In fact, our our position and situation is much worse than the West. The West, what does it have to tackle with? Uh, uh, the the problems of dealing with the minority religion like Islam in them, that's not a problem. Pakistan has had a systematic problem of terrorism within the country, wherein people use social media to become radicalized, and that very radicalism was used to blow up countless number of civilians and armed officials within Pakistan. We are the most affected nation by terrorism. Why did Pakistan experience so much terrorism? How did how did so many terrorists come into Pakistan? How where, where, where did all of this come from? This all came from misinformation. Where is this radical ideology of Islam even coming from? This is all coming from misinformation. So I strongly believe that the idea of coining it as digital terrorism and trying to go to the roots of it. So for instance, if there are articles out there, which I've seen myself, which say that Natasha uh, has been acquitted and she's run away to Dubai. I want to know who put them up. I want to know what the reason was. Why did they do it? Why did they decide that they wanted to put up an article uh, dismissing our judicial system like that? Because what it does is a very simple thing. At the end of the day, anybody who's reading it will then say Pakistan is a lawless country. There is no justice in Pakistan. 
I will also commit an act of crime because I will also not be punished in the same manner that she was not. Mm-hmm. This, this is how criminals become emboldened and this is how they commit more crimes. And it's very important because, of course, like you said, let me go to Harida, I'll come back to you, that it, it, it invariably destroys any kind of deterrence that, you know, uh, by taking action we can perhaps achieve in cases like this, which perhaps become high profile or are more, you know, on the media. Um, and therefore, you know, one can use them to actually portray an efficient judicial system, an efficient system where it works. I'm not saying wrongly. Um, Gharida, I know that you have limited time, but I would like uh, to ask you, do you think that, you know, we've had the COAS also talk about this recently and, uh, you know, he's talked about the ability of individuals when he was talking to students to, to actually rely on their own resources and, you know, to, to sift through misinformation. Do you think as a nation we are equipped to do so? Because there is so much misinformation, uh, you as a journalist, and we've seen this, you know, all over as far as women are concerned, as far as people are concerned, it is also used, misinformation is used for character assassination, for example. Misinformation is used um, against individuals in all sorts of ways. And we are all vulnerable to it. One cannot say that, you know, anybody is above it. So, so in that sense, the law has to perhaps take its course. But before the law can take its course, the effects are unfortunately, uh, you know, right there in front of us. G, can you hear me, Karida? I think, I think there's a problem with audio. Uh, Safiola, the same thing, you know, we've talked about this before also, before I go to uh, Fakhar Saab here. We've talked about this before that this is something, you know, sometimes, most of the time the effects of social media are so quick that we talk about law and we talk about the efficacy of law and, you know, whether there are laws and they're not efficient or, you know, we need to work on implementation. But the thing is that mostly the effects have already happened. If you're talking about character assassination that a fake news is targeting, whether, you know, it's against a woman, whether it's anybody. The question is, it's already had its effect, right? So what do we do? I agree. And, and on top of that, what, what, what can one do? One can file a defamation case. I, I like telling people very often that I have filed, I have won Pakistan's biggest defamation case. I won it for my client, Mir Shakil Rahman Saab. This was the highest amount that was ever granted in Pakistan, 10 crore rupees. He has not been given that amount yet. The matter then got appealed and it's getting into several appeals. That's what happens. No matter how big you are, you could be the biggest media manganate of Pakistan. You would still not get justice in the traditional sense, given our lethargic courts. And let alone, let alone the lethargy of courts and defamation suits and you know removal of stigma suits, whatever have you. There, there a variety of legal means that one could pursue. At the end of the day. Keep in mind that it was this fake news that resulted in countless incorrect actions by your own judiciary. If you recollect uh, our former Chief Justice Saqib Nisar, who's the Chief Justice of Pakistan and also possibly the most educated person in the country. We're, we're talking about how education can bring this, but our Chief Justice was acting on various fake news and taking so motor notices. And then eventually after so motor notices, after his retirement in several cases, I'm not going to name them, they were actually eventually overturned on the basis that, you know, his so motor notice was on the basis of some social media clips, some news that got him agitated. So this is what happens with fake news that you no educated person can differentiate between fake news and uh, and um, real news. The problem really becomes what is the state going to do about it if if we finally find out that there is fake news? Why is there a man sitting in Lahore who is spreading constant hatred against Muslims in the UK? Why are they doing it? What is the reason? I think the state needs to investigate it as a serious crime and it needs to prosecute people and it needs to, after prosecution, put a couple of people in jail. Now, this is what the problem is. Now, at the end of the day, all of these people who are spreading fake news are also getting paid off by various political parties. So when they get caught, one political party or the other takes them as their banner people and s- start saying that they are being prosecuted simply because they were supporting a political party, that this was against their political discourse. And to understand that political parties are also one of the key players in the spread of fake news, along with individuals who might be getting paid off by foreign agencies is extremely important. So I honestly, I honestly believe that our political parties themselves need to take themselves to task. 
we see from almost all parties across the board i'm not going to blame one particular party but almost all parties we see exaggerated news fake news about how they portray their own leaders which is frankly very disturbing for the people of pakistan so i i i on that note safiul i'll come back to you we also have with us zaid gushkori thank you for joining us zaid sahab is a senior journalist that's why i'll just come back to you uh, thank you for joining us first i'll go to fakhar sahab fakhar sahab you heard what safiul is saying yeah. he's saying that you know political the role of political parties in this do you think do you agree with this you know to an extent in every political system everywhere around the world you know propaganda which is what garida also mentioned positive propaganda mm-hmm. is a part of their you know pr- uh, campaigns for their political parties but where does the buck stop and where does you know where do they have to you know realize that somebody who's f- uh, spreading fake news or is you know crossing the line has to be taken to task you yeah, of course the political parties have so uh, many responsibilities for that but i think so they are not starting uh, from from, the from there mm-hmm. i think so the, the political parties all the political parties want uh, them their leaders uh, their performance is every uh, time is on the top mm-hmm. this is i think so main uh, main thing okay. before the election what they are committing with the people of pakistan and what they are delivering this 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 also i think so this is a miscommitment or uh, uh, things like that of like a fake news why they they are doing like this we we can anyone ask them this is very important and the other thing is uh, as you people was talking about the uh, sakib nisar saab and uh, hmm. other people the chief, chief justice of pakistan former chief justice of pakistan what happened recently some days ago uh, the some religious parties people uh, what they were saying on the social media mm, mm, they mm. they were threatening the chief justice of pakistan i think so why we are not stopping these type of things this is very important if mm. for example if i am writing something on the twitter or uh, the other uh, media platform of mm. course the fia the cyber crime is there they are monitoring all the thing they will ask me that what are you writing and and how you can do this this is the most important thing i think so uh, uh, we have the law the pika so, act we, we have we talk about laws also and yeah. you know of course we can deal with the efficacy of legislation yeah. to deal with these issues is of course the main uh, solution to it yeah. but the question is even we saw the punjab government yeah. wanting to they were also wanting to bring a law but we've seen that every attempt becomes uh, you know more that there, there's uh, things said against it it becomes uh, you know again an issue yeah. controversial and it becomes uh, something that then doesn't go through I think so uh, as you are talking about the Punjab government mm. they have the defamation law and yeah. what is in that I think so you have read about that uh, I also I think so this is this is not we are not living in this type of era that we can stop the people who criticizing uh, the governments of course they should criticize they can if they are uh, uh, giving them a vote they can criticize they can criticize. ask them criticism you are you are right criticism and the fake news is totally, totally different, different thing different. to each other and criticism yeah. of course and or, or, or if based on fake yeah. news yeah. has to be controlled because then it becomes about the state let me take zaid sahab on this zaid sahab do you agree with this you know we're talking about the attempt by the punjab government uh, to bring legislation against you know this kind of fake news which we've seen consistently happen for a while now and then you know of course the fact that it becomes controversial and how does the state deal with that then uh thank you marok uh, uh, i just wanted to have an idea basically the what is the discussion what the this because i i just joined you so i don't know the what exactly the focus of our, our debate is and the, if, if you could explain so i i would be able to talking say. about fake news we're talking about a controversial uh, we're talking about propaganda that is being used digital terrorism that is invariably you know something that is now the term is new but of course the issue is is a, is a, has been for, there for a while and we've seen the cos also talk about this again and again Uh, the way that it harms the state of pakistan there is no end to it it is against institutions it is against the state it is against you know we've seen it at every level all levels the issue is how does one deal with that we've also seen the incident in recent incident in in uh, uk where you know uh, people died because of uh, a fake news essentially and later we saw what happened and you know what the reality of the situation was so we're talking about those issues and then we saw what happened in punjab with the punjab government wanting to bring legislation on it but again invariably resulting in uh, you know 
uh, other controversial, uh, it becomes controversial even when it's not? Actually, Maharaj, uh, this is a very important issue. I'm glad that at least you have taken it up uh, uh, due to this fake news. Even UK cannot stop it. And it happened in Lahore, a, a one person accused of and uh, now in custody of Pakistan Federal Investigation Agency. Uh, he was the one who just uploaded allegedly this video which uh, created ripple and uh, created chaos and bloodshed otherwise in the UK. Uh, so this, this can happen anywhere and nobody can stop it. No country even, you know, uh, it's happening everywhere in the world, even in the US, even in Russia. But when we are focusing on Pakistan, this fake, fake news saga has been uh, putting the country and very, very important institution of the state uh, into trouble since 2016, when this law was introduced by the government of Pakistan. Uh, unfortunately, laws are here in Pakistan. When the state or the institution tries to implement the law, uh, somebody uh, does a wrong thing on social media, he always forgets that uh, this freedom, we're talking about press freedom, we're talking about freedom of expression, we forget that this comes with responsibility. So this is the dilemma, and that's why everybody who has a mobile and using WhatsApp or using social media apps, whatever he's using, uh, there should be a responsibility. Obviously, it comes with uh, uh, when your nation, people are well educated, uh, and so on. But the one unfortunate thing is that the Pakistan one institution, uh, I can quote you a couple of examples and the figures to bring the productive debate here that in the past one and a half year, Pakistani institution, cyber crime institute, uh, agency received 0 0.3 million complaints. And we have a very limited and uh, uh, the agency has a capacity to deal with only a few thousand complaints. So it's a, it's a challenge, big challenge. And whenever uh, somebody is arrested, whenever somebody is put on notice, we, we start debate that uh, uh, there is a carbon uh, freedom of expression, carbon freedom of press, and our, this freedom, this so-called freedom, uh, comes under danger. Uh, so this is unfortunate. Laws are here. Uh, we need to implement. Institutions should be uh, depoliticized, and they should uh, uh, act across the party line, across the... We're talking, uh, talking about depoliticization and acting across party lines. That is something that Zafiullah mentioned and that is what we... I want to take it, uh, you know, this debate further, but first we'll be taking a short break. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Gee, Safiola, I was coming to you on this. You know, there is that one China model that you talk about. I'm not, you know, necessarily an advocate of that. The solution, don't you think the solution has to be for countries like Pakistan, where we want to, of course, balance, everyone wants to balance social uh, freedom of speech with the right kind of checks. Do you think we can move towards those? Do you think we can perhaps have a system in place where, you know, ideally speaking, there are checks at the first level and, you know, and then people and also a little deterrence which is needed. And you also mentioned that, that when people see that they can't get away with it, I think that's also essential to, to you know, curtailing this kind of digital terrorism. Uh, Maruf, so when we when we say that point, we don't want the Chinese model, but then surely we need to agree on at least some model, uh, some other country perhaps that has successfully managed to overcome their extreme problems of fake news. And I, for the life of me, cannot think of any country that has successfully managed to create harmony within their own uh, country other than China. 
um, who, which have which have successfully dealt with fake news. And uh, I was just given an excellent example by Iftikhar Sab. He was saying that you know instead of challenging the issues of fake news, there are more issues of the kind of contempt that people were carrying out against the Chief Justice recently. Now this is an ideal example of what fake news does. So the Chief Justice gave a judgment. The judgment was, in my opinion, very clear. There was nothing un-Islamic about it. The people, however, started sh- spreading fake news that the Chief Justice of Pakistan has now challenging the finality of the Prophet. So the Supreme Court of Pakistan gave a clarification on that matter. Once again, the fake news engine did not stop. It became worse. So once again, the Supreme Court gave a second clarification on the matter. The fake news engine did not stop. It got worse. Then the Supreme Court gave a third clarification. Maruf, this is unprecedented. You and I are both lawyers. We know that the court does not clarify its own judgments time over and over again. But this is what fake news did. The fake news was so high, so hyped up that people were led to believe that the Chief Justice of Pakistan has become an anti-Islamic, anti-Christ who is challenging the very foundation of Islam, even though the judgment said nothing of the sort. And add to that no it was not just the threats to life add to that the fact that the recent proceedings which of course were not telecast but there was downright contempt in which people called him a non muslim people called him a kafir people challenged his position on the uh, on the seat that he's sitting on why because they were all completely brainwashed by the idea by the thought that this man is somebody who's out to destroy our faith and this is all because of fake news so fake news led to a variety of other things and this just brings me back to the central question fake news how do we how do we how do we challenge it so when we talk about a firewall it's become such a big issue here but there are firewalls in australia there are firewalls in the us there's a firewall in the uk these have been done by an act of the parliament the parliament they did not have a problem passing a firewall to protect their national security why do we consistently have a problem when it comes to matters of our national security and who is it who wants this fake news out so this is what i keep saying let's let's try and trace who, where is this fake news coming from why why is why did that man farhan asif in lahore send out a fake news why did somebody write an article saying that natasha has run away to dubai what was their purpose what were they trying to achieve by that and pakistan has given dossier after dossier to the international community saying that the fake news is not emerging from pakistan fake news is emerging from outside of pakistan so even if we were to properly execute things even if we were to bring justice by arresting people the the majority of the news is coming from outside of pakistan our neighbor india has been clearly identified by the un authorities as being the biggest network of fake news in the world i think we are a primary target not just for india but for many other countries who have geopolitical issues so given our very unique geopolitical situation given the kind of neighbor that we have given the fact that our own country is so extremely polarized polarized china is is one country with one ethnicity the han uh, the hans are 99% of the chinese ethnicities we are divided into different ethnicities different religions different uh, religious sex different beliefs for a country that has come about like that and for us to remain united on one thing is extremely difficult so to create any sense of homogeneity the state needs to take extraordinary actions if anything i propose that we should take even harsher actions than what china is doing let alone look towards the west which has completely failed at trying to protect what is what is uh, let's let's look at the uk for instance maro the fake news and because of because of the problems that the uk has encountered there is a separatist movement going on in scotland almost uh, scotland almost succeeded only 0.5% of the votes were different northern ireland is almost about to succeed from the uk Th- these are countries on the verge of collapse uh, economic collapse social collapse cultural collapse because there is this constant barrage of propaganda against their own countries so we have to make up our minds do we want this or do we want to stay united as one pakistan Yeah. You think that's the solution? I think so. As uh, you said uh, about the Chinese model, and uh, the barrister Saab was mm. uh, saying that the Chinese model, I think, so cannot be applicable on Pakistan. I mm. agree with that. Mm. Uh, we have so many laws. We have a mm. system. We are mm. installing the firewall and things mm. like that. I think mm. so. Uh, maybe the people are sitting on the top. They, mm. uh, they, they, they will be agree on that. That this is the solution. I think so. 
uh, but I am not agree with uh, with that. We have uh, uh, we can see so many countries in the world. Uh, there are uh, criticism. There are uh, so many things. And the one the the, the one most important thing is uh, uh, the news from the news channel from the newspaper. I think so. We should uh, allow them uh, to honor the proper news, which is very important. I think that I think that's really the most important uh, point that you've made. Yeah, of course. That this is the this response. Is Nowadays, nowadays we have seen so many incidents mm. in Pakistan, especially mm. in the Quram. Mm. Uh, what was going there for ten days? But there was no news in the uh, electronic on the mainstream media. The, mm. the news was coming via the Twitter be, and things like that. I think it's very. Be, there has to be responsibility. I think Zaid Sab also. Uh, we're running out of time, but Fakhar Sab raises an important point. Zaid Sab, do you agree with this that whoever you know, as a journalist? There has to be responsibility for whatever is going out, whether you know it is through news channels, whether it's through newspapers. So that information, the accuracy of that information should be uh, monumental, has to be monumental. I think uh, I agree to uh, this discussion that uh, it's government responsibility to regulate the institution. And most important thing is it doesn't matter that either we speak uh, help of China to install the uh, this uh, firewall and so many uh, things. Uh, we, we can't uh, uh, eradicate uh, at least the, uh, this uh, fake news uh, uh, saga. But the most important thing, we try to uh, bring the international apps and social media apps and international laws and companies to convince them that to at least cooperate with Pakistan because they are not cooperating with Pakistan. Pakistan has to... Uh, ensure this that uh, they are uh, supporting Pakistan. What exactly Pakistan needs for? Because Pakistan has been a victim of, uh, I think, the worst victim of, of fake news. Uh, one of our panelists was very uh, was telling about uh, Indian uh, fake news. Uh, it, it's like in lies are it's like in ocean lies against Pakistan everywhere. It's, it's absolute deep fake when it comes to. Uh, create fake news about Pakistan inside, uh, particularly about Balochistan, and they established all in Germany, everywhere in the world, just to paint Pakistan a uh, bad uh, picture. And this has been a dilemma for so many countries. But the solution is that uh, laws are here, uh, everything is here, and the government should at least uh, ensure it that they are all discussing before the parliament if they really want to. Uh, prevail this with this new firewall system because this firewall system, which otherwise Chinese have established, is absolute uh, a new world for all Chinese and it would be a new world for all Pakistanis. And I think we are a democracy, at least uh, a better democracy, uh, I can say. We are talking about this, so people who not accept it. So we need freedom, but freedom should come with responsibility, particularly those research uh, debaters and journalists, we are more responsible. But I have seen as a journalist, as Ox was falling on print media 10 years ago, we were very hopeful that this would be placed with the new national TV screen. But even now, Ox has fallen on this national television everywhere. And now the social media is taking the lead. And we have seen uh, so many stories. Uh, almost 70% content is coming up on social media and then the national mainstream media uh, picked it up. So uh, it's uh, inevitable. We can't stop. Right. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us, Zayed Gishkori Saab. Thank you for your time. Fakhar Yusuf Sayyid, thank you for joining us. Bastos Afiullah Ghori, thank you so much for being with us today on this um, such an important topic. Uh, uh, Ghanida Farooqi, thank you for joining us today. Of course, Pakistan's own integrity, Pakistan's propaganda against Pakistan will not be tolerated is a message that the COS again and again, you know, and against Pakistan state will not be tolerated. But the real question is that do we have enough checks uh, in place to deal with digital terrorism? And that is what we spoke about. We spoke to some, in, to some length uh, about the Chinese model, whether, you know, that can uh, be uh, perhaps, uh, you know, in, its, in some shape or form, but whether that will suit or not. But the question is, we do have enough laws in the field. 
how do we implement them? How do we deal with implementation of these laws, the efficacy of them? And depoliticization of uh, any and all uh, content which is causing this kind of uh, digital terrorism is extremely important for Pakistan as a state. Let's, let's hope that we can go uh, around to that level where it isn't about any political party, it is about what is important for the state of Pakistan. Thank you so much for joining us today on Pakistan.